presenter is Joshua Halpern. You might know him as Josh. Um, he's going to be talking to us on transformative love, tending the garden of, a, of another's growth. Josh Halpern comes from the background of filmmaking and food justice. An integral ecology MA student in the PCC department, he is currently exploring transforming relationships with home. He has the word love tattooed on his back in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. I like to see that sometimes. Right? <laughs> Maybe after. Okay. <laughs> and all kinds. Um, so I think my talk's going to be a little more in the um, Becky Ferrer school of sort of um, channeling a little bit. I, I have some, some broader notes, but I'm hoping to uh, sort of be present with love. I, I always feel very um, permeated through and through with love, and it's always sort of, it, I have been, I, I feel that way. Um, I felt that way through my whole life. Um, my best friend, when I told him about this conference, he says, oh, love, that's your shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, that's always been my sort of favorite topic. Um, so, yeah, hopefully I can, um, I'll, I'll be sort of going through some of the personal, my personal experiences and, and explorations, and, and, you know, hopefully they'll be um, a revealing or, or able to, um, to, we can, these are aspects that we can all share. Um, so yeah, um, my topic is transformational love, and, and I think that there's a lot of ways that um, we're transforming the world right now, and that um, love really is sort of, the, to me, the most fundamental and vital of, of all our different tools. Um, and we can approach love and, and understand love from so many different directions. Um, so I'm going to take us sort of through um, understanding love sort of through the stories that we share, um, that we carry with us, um, through the futures that we're all trying to co-create, and also just um, love as, as it's experienced in the present moment, um, in each vital second that we're, that we're all together. Um, so yeah, love. Um, uh, love has been... My oldest prayer, I guess, is one way to put it. My mother, when she would tuck me in, we had this sort of whole elaborate, she would say, good night, Max, good night, Freddy, good night, Panda, good night, Snoopy, good night, Bear, good night, Magical, good night, Beauty, good night, Minky, good night, Nibble, good night, Abraham, good night, Stress, good night, Little Butterfly, I love you, sleep while I love you, and the I love you part was the important. I had a lot of stuffed animals, in case you could. <laughs> But the I love you part was important, was the most important. I, and we said, and still do when we, when we talk on the phone, um, we say I love you instead of goodbye. It's sort of this, like, just in case um, anything happens, I want you to know. And, um, and I've, you know, I've felt really blessed with that. It can also be, you know, different for people who grew up in families where you don't say I love you as, as often or as easily. Um, but uh, I think, you know, at some point, and I don't remember when I I, um, I ha was asked or put to the question of um, what my what my last words would be when I died, mm -hmm. and that was sort of really compelling to me as a kid. And I felt like, well, you want to pick those pretty carefully if you can, because you don't want your last words to be like, oh shit, a truck. Um, <laughs> so. So love seemed like the best word that I could use as a last, as a, as my last words. I wanted to, you know, on my tombstone. Now I'm not sure I'm going to be buried. I might th thoughts of that have shifted a little. Um, though it wouldn't be bad to be like buried and just plant a tree and take out the whole. Never mind. It, love includes all the questions of death. It, it includes the whole span of life, um, and so what that meant was that idea of of saying love is your last words was. Um, Whenever I was doing something scary, I would say love, right? But you know, like right before the roller coaster crested <laughs> over the hill, or right before I was doing something like this, um, I'd say love. And sometimes I remember periods of my life where, you know, um, I'd be going to bed and I'd say, 
Love. No, that was too, that I need, needs to be more serious. Love. Yeah. No, that's too serious. Love. You know, I'm like feeling into all those different, you know, all these different degrees and all these different nuances of it. Um, it becomes, you know, I, I, I'm very interested in the idea of mantras and, and sort of the repeti repetition of God's name as a way to sort of tap into those aspects, but I haven't found one particular mantra or chant that has really touched me um, so far, but love comes the closest for that. I could repeat love, love over and over again. Um, and it ended up being, um, you know, it's like I would, if, if there was a bit of wet cement and people writing their names in it, I would write love. Like if there was any, like a tag that I had for um, graffiti or my, you know, uh, petty vandalism, it would be love. And, um, and as Rand introduced, I have, I also have a uh, love tattooed on my back. And it's the original hieroglyphic, and maybe I'll show some of you if you want to see. Maybe not. <laughs> um, and what's remarkable about that tattoo also for me is that um, my father was a, was a scholar, and one of the things he um, was interested in was ancient religions, and so I asked him if he knew the word for love um, in the ancient hieroglyphs, and he, um, he didn't, but he actually remembered to ask an Egyptologist when he uh, ran into one at one point, and, and found it and got back to me, and that was sort of a, a big deal, because he didn't always remember you know, those kinds of details for me. And, um, and he passed away about 10 years ago, and I think may have seen that I got that tattooed on myself. Um, there's one chance where he could have, but I'm not sure. But it, so, I'll, you know, I choose tattoos kind of carefully. And um, it, I just have that one in the river system I was born next to. And, um, and so this has been th with me and, and through me and part of me uh, my whole life. Um, so, you know, we, we, as we come out into the world and we try to enact love in our relationships, in our, in our um, experiences, we carry a lot of um, stories and, and histories and, um, and wounds from, from love, from our parents' um, versions of love, from our families, from um, our, our previous partners, and, and different, all the different kinds of relational experiences that we, that we have. And some of these are healthy and beautiful, and some of them are more difficult. And I'm sure all of us know what I mean um, in our own ways. Um, my, in order for me to be born, there was a major divorce that had to happen with my family and a big sort of um, eruptive, um, uh, really sort of wounding experience for my family. And then when I came around, there was this sort of, um, so this, this, all this had to happen because this child had to be born, and this is this is a, a connection of love, and and um, I just I spent the, um, the summer cleaning out my my family's old house and going through the basement. I found both you know love notes from my parents, the beginning of their relationship, where they're the most unique and magical and brilliant peoples in the universe who've ever met one another, and also you know. Um, 15 years later, as you know, the stresses of living in America in the 80s have you know, gotten into them. And, um, and there's a lot of reckoning in my own life of how my relationships compare to theirs and, and the, the decisions that I make and the, and the um, ways that I see the, the you know, possibilities that they enacted and also the ways that they closed up or, or, um, or weren't always as conscious as they could have been. There were a lot of boundaries um, in relationship with sexuality and, and closeness that I, both my parents had, had difficulty with sometimes. Um, and I'm sure we all have you know, our own working with that. My, um, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of stories about boundaries that I can talk about. Uh, but the one I was thinking about today is I was reminded my mom and I once had a um, a fight about which one of us was more queer. And um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who won the fight, but it was no nobody won. It was a, it was a tie. But anyway, <laughs> um, but there's a lot. I mean, I 
Well, it's, it's, it's funny. I ended up doing a lot of, um, after my father's death, I ended up telling a lot of stories in different, in different ways through film and through different art forms about, about who he was and sort of where I come, came out of and all these different stories about him. And a lot of the stories, a lot of the, the complicated relationships in my family had to do with love and sexuality and how this comes through. And he cared deeply about it, um, my father. He, uh, he wrote a book, one book on transformation um, over the course of um, like 40 years, basically. And there was, and you know, my understanding of transformative love um, to a large degree comes from him. And, and he did his, you know, his best uh, to live into that work as well. Um, but, you know, his, his sense of transformative love was, and in, and in comparison to romantic love, for instance, where there's, there's some fragmenting involved, that there's, that there's partial beings trying to sort of um, relate to one another uh, so that they become whole through the other person. Um, he, my father saw transformative love as um, there's a seed, there's, a, there's a, something growing in, in, in each of us, and, and when I can witness that in you and support that growth, um, whatever it is, whatever you're looking to grow, whatever you're looking to um, come into your life, whether or not it's my stuff, whether or not it leads you closer to me or further away, I still want to support that. That's kind of, that kind of transformative love. Um, and I think that we have um, a lot of um, transformation ahead of us that we're trying to put together um, at this time. There's a lot of change afoot. There's a lot of um, healing that, that needs to occur. Um, and I can't see any better way to relate to those questions than through love. Um, my father saw love and justice as, and understanding completely commingled, that you couldn't have justice without love and understanding, and all the, they all you know, connected through each other. And, and so by being in love, by, by situating yourself in love, you're, you're making sort of a commitment to continuation to sort of the furthering of relationships to, you know, we're all in this together, whatever happens. Um, it, it drives you to keep going when things are, are bleak. Um, you know, it, 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 love comes from this ancient source and it's, it's completely replenishable. It's completely, um, it doesn't run out. It's one of the only resources that we have that builds on itself, that, mm -hmm. that continues to uh, grow the more we feed it. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of different ways that, there's a lot of different experiences that come in that are difficult or, or, or easy, you know, that feel negative or, or positive. That happens in relationships, that also happens in just life experiences. And, you know, the practice for me has been trying to be loving towards all of it. That doesn't mean that, that includes healthy boundaries, that includes sort of creating a space where you're able to be clear and balanced enough to be able to participate. But, you know, you can't control what comes up next, um, but you have some choices into what, how you can react to it, what, how you can relate to it. And um, even, you know, the most difficult things are going to be the, some of the best teachers. So there's always things to learn, and, and when you sort of act lovingly, um, that tends to work out. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not, it, that love doesn't include sacrifice or, or, or wounds or sort of this, you know, there's all the dark side. It's completely intermingled. Love includes all of that. Um, all the pain, all the heartbreak, all the, um, you know, that stuff. Um, but it's still, it's still sort of such a, f um, such a forward momentum, momentum and such a, it has such a, um, it's so magical, basically. It's so like, like filled with all this like creativity and imagination, which is exactly the kind of things that we need to, to like be working with going ahead. Um, so that, and I'll, I'm just gonna talk about the present moment and then I'll have a, 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 just a few practices before I close. Um, just being present, just being conscious. There's, there's, 
love all around us. It manifests, I mean, as we've been talking about a little this morning, it manifests in dappled sunlight and in sort of, a, you know, a, a fresh glass of water and, it, and all the blossoms of um, spring that arrive and also all the sort of um, overgrowth, sort of dying off that happens in late summer and in fall. Through the entire process, it, it's, it, there's love. And, and, um, and it, there's love in the process, too. You don't just love for only the ripened fruit that it eventually yields. You love throughout the experience. Um, and so, you know, walking down the street, I can feel love from all sorts of places. And I can share it. It's not just about sort of, yes, love me, I need love. <laughs> <laughs> It's about sharing it back out, sending it back out, you know? That's the gift, right? Is you take a gift and you pass it through, you keep it going. Um, and, and that can apply to sort of any different creature or ensouled being that we come across um, and are relating to them over time. Um, so I... Uh, I have a couple practices that we could put together. I, we're come, I think after me is a lunch break, so some of you, even with the Student Alliance food, might be hungry, so I was thinking we could send some love to our lunch meal. Uh, you know, I don't know if you, all of you know what you're going to be eating for lunch, but it's, you, know, you could send a little love to it, so that when, when you eat it... Down by time. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it will exist in a, very soon, that whatever the sandwich or you know, soup or salad or whatever, you know, hunk of chicken wing that you eat, um, send some love. Because it, you know, like we were talking about water before, there's an ability for um, these, these uh, things to nourish us in deeper levels. Um, you could also send some love to your previous uh, meal, if you remember what it was. It might have been ridiculous, but you could still send love to it. It was a jelly donut. Um, um, and, you know, not just to that particular, you know, um, bite, but also to all the, you know, if you had some of those bagels, they have seeds, they have grains, they have all the different people that put the bagels together, they have all the different elements that went into the meal, those are all worth, you know, being grateful for and sending love to. Um, I was also going to say, you know, you could send, I just, I like sharing love, so I was thinking we could send love to somebody not in the room, but who's nearby, who we could see today if we wanted to, and send love there. And, you know, there might be complicated relationships. I'm not saying that you have pure love with everybody, but love includes all those different aspects. Um, you could send love to somebody who's far away, who you haven't talked to in a while. You know? You could send love to whoever's around you in this room right now. Which you should do. Everybody do that right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes? Well, I'm kind of interrupting you. That's okay, that's okay. I'm, I'm curious uh, about to. your experience of sending love. Like how, sure, yeah. I mean, I have my own thing that I would call that, mm -hmm. but I'm, I don't know if it's the same. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, I can picture, it's that. like, there's different versions of that. Like sometimes you get triggered by a smell or you get triggered by like a, a, a there's like somatic sort of subtle, um, you feel it in your cells or you feel it in your, but when you're maybe intentionally sending love, you can do that. Um, just by getting the feeling of them, just by getting the, you can picture them in your head. We all have our different ways of, you know, some of us are more visual, some of us are more um, sound oriented. There's a lot of ways. I'm curious about your way though, your particular way. Um, I have a lot of people that I love in the world. And, um, there, I just did it. I don't know, it's hard to describe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it, tune into it. To, I, I, I don't have a prescription for how to do it. I have, um, I think love is something that we all have deep, deep feelings about. You just feel it. You feel it. So you feel in it your own way, whatever way it feels appropriate but, to you. But that's what the way. I'm that's asking the way you about your particular I know, I know. <laughs> I'm not asking you to prescribe. I know. I, I, um, I feel it in my, in my different, like in my heart, because I've worked a lot with my heart space. Um, and it depends on who it is. If I, you know, this, uh, this, this is the other thing I was going to say. The, the, the f next practice is to send love to somebody you have difficult feelings about. Somebody who maybe challenges you or you're not super into. And if you can send them love, that's 
a wonderful thing. It's the sort of Buddhist practice of I wish them free from suffering and the root of suffering. There's you know, there's ways you can be um, sharing love and, and 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 honoring sort of the love that we all share, even if we're coming from different perspectives and we have different um, positions. Um, but yeah, I um, and and this is how we, you know, my father. Um, thought of law as uh, he defined politics as what we can and need to do together, and love is the best way to understand what needs to be changed, what needs to occur together, what we can shape, how we can shape things, and um, and I think that that is always there. It's always there. It, it you know through all the histories that we've come through and all the sort of projections and and and. Um, imaginations of what we want the world to be, love is available right now in this moment in, in relating to anywhere we're looking. And, um, and I think the more that we do that and the more we sort of share it, the more people can all do it together. So I think that's me. Two minutes for Q and A. You guys get to eat. Um, I'm really curious. So you talked a little about meta meditation, the Buddhist sending love. And, um, so what I'm really curious about is how it's actually not possible to love anything until we've had the experience of loving ourselves. Okay. Yeah. And so when you're talking about transformational love, I keep coming back to well, how do I transform my relationship with myself before I'm able to love others? And, I mean, it depends on whether you, we are relational beings. So one of the reasons that we have trouble loving ourselves sometimes is because we haven't received it in the ways that we've needed to, or we haven't been able to share it. So I think that there's love that you can tap into by <clears throat> being by yourself on top of a mountain, and there's love that you can tap into by being in the presence of people who recognize you and, and support you and, and finding those spaces where that's possible. And yeah, absolutely. Loving yourself is, is huge, and it's something I, I struggle with all the time. Um, it's, you know, I have an easy time loving other people. It's, it's not so easy to love myself. Um, but um, but you go day by day, and like you said, you know, some days you're on the floor when the moon is out, and some days you're <laughs> feeling present and accepted and and embraced by both the people around you and maybe the the planet and the universe. So that's love. Okay, thanks. Thank you.